spiritual set of uh, the convention and closing, the doors closing, etc. I'm Tom Worsh, and I thank you. And I'm John Stanley. Yeah. I'm Lord Glendraw, host of Lord Glendraw's Nerve Rack. Good morning. And I'm the mysterious, weird guest, Leon Kester. <laughs> Did we get your name, Tom? Oh, Tom Camus. Okay. I was going to say, Leon, they've been looking for you for a while. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, th this is actually my, I, what I call my ninth documentary uh, film. Uh, it was made one time before called Back to Space Con. Uh, but I had a lot of, I mean, when people saw Back to Space Con, they were like, do you have more footage? Do you have, and, you know, do you have more? And I did. And uh, most all of this footage was, not most all, all of the footage you're about to see was shot in 16 millimeter mag sound. Yes. They did not have video uh, when you went out of studio in the mid to late 70s. Yes. Actually, I think John told me today that they didn't have it until 1982, correct? No, it was February of 1981. <laughs> when Channel 2 moved from Jack London Square to Jack London Village in a whole new building, uh, that was the month that we began to use video for the first time. No right. more 16 millimeter. Wow. Right, so when you, when you went out of studio to do anything, you had to shoot it with film. And of course, Hollywood used 35 millimeter and 70 millimeter. You couldn't do that. That would be you know, way too costly. So everything you're about to see was shot in 16 millimeter mag sound. Now, what makes that unique is that very few, and I don't know of any other places in the country that actually went to a space contact convention and shot so much footage. But Bob Wilkins did. Yeah. And um, he actually gave me this big box of footage and said, maybe you could do something with this someday. Um, I actually had it for years trying to figure out what I could do with all of it. And I decided what I would do is I would, what I call is a porthole back in time so that you can actually go back in this film and see the convention as it was like you were going to it today. So that you would see people walking in, you would see the dealers' rooms, the costume contests, the stars on stage, and all of that, and see what the convention was actually like. And actually see that it's the roots of the convention that we have today, the SpaceCon conventions were. And John and I were talking earlier about the fact that he actually went to conventions before SpaceCon in the Except the 60s, I believe, right, John? Well, as far back as I remember is 1972, Robert Block invited me to be his guest at one of the World Fantasy Cons, and that was designed to, to uh, attract famous writers, science fiction and fantasy writers, uh, and it had none of the elements of the shows that would come in the future. All you did was go there and you would meet these wonderful writers, these famous, famous writers, You'd uh, listen to their talks, uh, attend various panels, and so on. Uh, and it was only in, it was later in the 70s when, uh, after the success of the original Star Trek show, that now we began to see shows devoted to those characters and those situations in those series, Star Trek and Star Wars. They began to change the makeup of uh, going to a so-called convention as we know them today. Right. Yeah, and then you were going to say something about the first conventions you went to. Uh... Well, the first conventions I went to were space cons. And uh, it's important to remember these were not just science fiction conventions. They were also space science conventions. Uh, I remember seeing J. Allen Hynek talking about SETI, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Uh, I remember uh, talking about Arecibo, the world's largest radio telescope at the time. Uh, but it was also a phantom convention. There was some guy handing out this flyer for some funky film about this young boy raised on a planet 
and um, struggling against this this villain named Darth Vidar <laughs> with this weird little triangular Star Wars. And they showed the trailer there for the first time, and everyone in the audience was absolutely blown away. Uh, you could you could meet the the stars. Uh, I, and I mean meet the stars. Walk up to them, talk to them. They walk through the convention. They walk through the dealers' room. George Takei walking through the dealers' room. They walk walk up to them and talk to them. James Dewey they walk up to them and talk to them. Uh, yeah, th this film you're about to see is a day at the convention that set the pattern for the convention where we're at today. That's right. Exactly. Well, I, I, first thing that comes to mind um, for this convention is, you know, they brought back hard science uh, yes. panels because there was really a dearth of them for, I, I don't remember, remember any convention uh, like this that had hard science since then and now Silicon Valley, what they started doing over a couple of years ago, I guess. Yes. So, oh, yeah. so that's, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the talk is headed to this in such a way that you're going to arrive at the convention, you're going to go through the door, uh, you're going to see the dealers, you're going to eventually see the stars and make their appearances. So step by step, it's going to take you through what it was like to be there on any particular day. And please keep in mind, this stuff was not shot on a cell phone. There was no such thing. This is, you had to go through the process of getting a cameraman, Getting, getting someone who knew what they were doing, and Bob Wilkins did that, and that's the reason why we've got this footage today. Right, and, and I had the 60 millimeter footage scanned, which is the best transfer you can do, so it, it, it's really good. I do have it on Blu-ray, but unfortunately we don't have the capability to show the Blu-ray, but the, the, you know, the regular DVD is good, so it, it'll look good. And, uh, and remember, it, it, it's not the typical documentary that people make today where they go and get the star who's now aged and they sit there and explain to you what they did and all this. You're going to actually see the stars back in the, in the 70s when they uh, were there at the convention, which is, is fun. So I intermixed interviews that Bob did uh, with the stars uh, at the convention sometimes, sometimes not at the convention, but it was about the same time. So uh, enjoy it. I think you'll... you'll Love seeing the 1976 77 convention uh, again, and we'll come back and take questions afterwards. Oh. So, would we be able to purchase a copy of this? Uh, you know, I made this for this purpose so far, so I'm, I am not releasing it on DVD uh, until I run the course of the, of the convention. So, uh, this is the first time we've shown it, so we'll, we'll see what your reaction is. Oh, I agree. You have one more thing, though. So, down in front of us there, there's a nice poster of Bob Wilkins. Right. Somebody's going to get a chance to win that after this is all over. So, hang on till the end, and you'll find out how you can win that and take it with you tonight. It's not going to be something that you're going to have to pick up tomorrow. You'll be carrying it out the door tonight. That's right. Okay, we'll see you soon. Here we go. I, you know, it, it amazes me the clarity of that. I mean, this is something, you know, uh, you think a 16 millimeter, well, you know, Matter of Living Dead, we've got the 16 millimeter, and I think a lot of you have seen how good that is. So 16 millimeter <laughs> can really do a good job, as you just saw. Everything that was in this film was 16 millimeter. And that's that's amazing, you know. So anyway, um, anything you guys want to say before we do questions? It brought back the weirdest memory I have of SpaceCon was it was the first time I ever saw silver mylar balloons. <laughs> and they blew my mind. It's like it's a UFO on a string. It's made of metal. It's obviously it's gotta be solid metal and it floats. How does it float? <laughs> I just brought that memory back. I was so blown away. I was so impressed with mylar as a young child walking through the convention seeing these floating balls of metal. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's true. I mean, I remember that. They, that was the first place that I saw them. Yeah, uh, the first time I'd ever seen them. You know, now they're everywhere for birthdays and everything. Oh, yeah. Back then, that was 
Silver. You saw those silver ones there. That was brand spanking new. That's right. Right. Yeah, pretty amazing. So what it reminded me of, and you really did a wonderful job uh, re editing this. Mm -hmm. I found it far more fascinating this time. What I remembered was after I began to do creature features, they were having these uh, Star Trek shows where Leonard Nimoy and William Shatner and some of the other stars would come to a major hotel downtown San Francisco or over by the airport, <coughs> airport. And it was more like a stage show. I would get up and introduce the various stars and they would talk for a while about uh, doing the shows. And it was a little bit different than, um, I think they were called the Creation Cons. Yeah. 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 yeah, and they were very, very popular. And obviously this was an extension of what Tom uh, let us see from beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. I mean, this really is the roots to the conventions today, because they just didn't exist, you know, in the early 70s. Uh, they started the Star Trek conventions, but they were really rare. And the Space Con ones here, I, I went to three of them. I think there was, if I remember right, there was possibly four here, I think, and then there was one in L.A. One in L.A., yeah. yeah. When the, when went down to Los Angeles, right. and that was when Star Trek, uh, Star Wars came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what the interesting thing about this, in in the documentary I made before this one called Back to Space Con, I actually <coughs> interviewed the people that um, made Space Con work. Was that the only reason there was Star Trek conventions and all that merchandise that you saw that was being sold by the dealers? was that Desilu Studios forgot to copyright the first two seasons of Star Trek. Wow! So everyone had the ability to go ahead and make merchandise. So everything you saw there was not commercially made. It was made by people. They made it on their own, and that's who the dealers were. Wow. You know what? And by the way, that brings back another memory. It was the only time at a convention I ever saw full episodes of Star Trek on a big screen. That's they, they used to show. I remember, oh, I remember seeing uh, Mirror Mirror on the big screen. It played like a movie. It was fantastic. It was great. Yeah, that's because Bob Wilkins used to borrow the prints from Channel Two. <laughs> 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 he did. He did. He did. Great. And uh, and then of course when it went to LA is when Star Wars came out and fans down there started to do the same thing they did with Star Trek. And all of a sudden, 20th Century Fox came into the convention and said, nope, you're not doing this. And because uh, they had all of it uh, copyrighted, so they had to stop. Yeah. And they actually had to go around the convention and close down dealers that were selling stuff. Wow. And then, as we all know, Star Wars became totally commercial. And you could buy Star Wars in any store uh, across the country, and it wasn't unique anymore. Like, uh, the Space Con conventions or the Federation trading post in Berkeley. I was just going to say, you remember that. Oh, yeah. That was all because of non copywriting the first two seasons of Star Trek. Yeah, they're going to have a, a special show at the old Federation in Oakland on May the 12th. May, <coughs> May 12th. <coughs> May 12th. <coughs> the date, but they're having yeah, like a, it's a free uh, event. Uh, you don't have to pay to get in. It's a reunion of the. They're going to tear down the building where uh, Federation Trading Post used to be. So they're going to have like a five-hour event where you can go in and see the store. And uh, they'll have uh, things on display and stuff like that. And, uh, uh, and then that's it. The, the building's being torn down after that. So, I believe, so let, I believe it's May 12th. So, yeah, 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 sure, sure. Sure. so let's take your questions. Does anyone, there's microphones set up there. Uh, if you want to, uh, sure everyone can hear you. Why did space con eventually go away? Um, really because of the Star Wars situation and merchandising uh, is what uh, Terry Turman uh, told me. Uh, I think we talked about that somewhat in Back to Space Con, the, the other documentary that I did. Uh, it was the whole Star Wars thing. And Star, War, Star Wars, was, Star Trek was kind of cooling down at that time because Star Wars came in and pretty much, you know, tampered it down for a while and conventions were all going to Star Wars and uh, and that was it and uh, so I think the last one was 1980 was the last uh, space con 
Uh, I just want to add something to that. I actually know uh, Craig Miller, who uh, was actually asked by Lucasfilm to go around the conventions and kind of say, well, see, you know, see whether they're selling Star Wars stuff, that's with licensing and all that stuff. He's a nice guy, and he, but you know, he had he had to do a job and go around and make sure ooh, people weren't selling stuff they weren't supposed to be. So, so that wasn't just SpaceCon; that was everybody had to feel that. And there was no one who could go around to the dealers and say, "Look, if you're going to sell the stuff, sign this contract saying we get a percentage, and you keep doing it," versus just completely shutting them down. That would have been the smart way to do it. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know how copyright works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they, 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 I think they, it really, really had to do with people making the merchandise themselves. Right, right, right. right. Which, which really what Space Time was, as you saw in the uh, film, was that people were making those things themselves. And uh, when Star Wars came out, it was all commercially made. Yeah. So, you, you know, you couldn't, they, they shut down the dealers that were making it themselves. Is really what I mean, like the about. handcrafted oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like, you know. Because the same Star Trek people that did the space time were doing that with Star Wars, and they said, "No way, you can't do that." So, unfortunately, <laughs> that, that was what was so innocent about space con was that it, it really was a fan, totally a fan event. The dealers, the stars, the, the attendees, there, everybody was there as a group, and it, it, it didn't have the commercial aspect to it. That, that you see a lot today. So, okay. so any, yeah, any other questions? Yeah, I think I can project pretty well. Okay. Uh, first comment is you did a really nice job of editing that. Thank you. Thank you. Second comment is, second comment is uh, it's a beautiful time capsule. I mean, to see those actors, yeah. particularly, yeah. particularly uh, Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford when they were that young. Mm -hmm. Just a beautiful capsule, time capsule. It's great. And my question is, how can I get a copy of this? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a mailing list that I give you my email address? Yeah. Something, anything? You know, I, I, for, I, for some reason at this point in time, I really want to keep this special uh, with the conventions like we did here uh, today. Um, and I'm not really going to release it for that reason. Wow. Uh, the Star, the, the, the um, interviews, like the Star Wars interviews, I actually have those on a DVD uh, at our table. So, oh, yes. and, and, and they're the complete interviews with all the stars. Uh, the Star Trek interviews, I'm not sure if I have those. No, I, I, I don't have those. And then the Space Con, a lot of that footage is, is tabled next to me, the, the uh, uh, November Fire. And they have Back to Space Con, which has a lot of footage too. Um, but I, my intention on this one is to do what we're doing here today. And, and that's to make it special for all of you to see and for me to show it and not really just put it out there at this uh -huh. point in time. So. Where's your booth? Where, where are you looking? Yeah, where's your booth? Oh, uh, where is our booth? It's uh, row 100, uh, right, right on the other side of the art uh, area there. Uh, 144? 141, 144. Right, right. right, next right. And I have some of these posters too for whoever doesn't witness today. Oh yes. <laughs> you know, I, I got to tell you about this poster. I mean, it, 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 it's interesting because it has Spock on it, which makes it kind of like Space Time. But Bob actually sold them at Space Con for the very first time. I saw that. Yeah. 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 And uh, that was the very first time that Bob sold them. That's where I bought the one that um, I had professionally. Uh, uh, copy look like with, with the photographer at the time because I made the Bob Wilkins scrapbook in 1999 and back in those days uh, there wasn't a whole lot of scanning going on so you had to actually take a picture uh, by a professional photographer of the poster and that's what this, I made these up from, from that so that's a rarity and it's on photographic paper so if you're interested I have some more uh, at the booth too so um, and you don't have to get the frame because Michael sets those on sale for right. <laughs> I think it's eight sixty-five percent off. Yeah. How do they do that? <laughs>
Do I have more questions? I have the card you guys passed out for the Federation Trading Post reunion. Here. It is May 12th. Okay. The address for anybody that wants to know is 2556 Telegraph Avenue, and they have a Facebook page, hmm. Federation Trading Post Reunion Berkeley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you all there with all these Star, Star Trek fans. I mean, I mean, it's free. And it's I mean, not go. Right. <laughs> Any other questions? May 12th. May 12th. May 12th. Do you think that anything could bring back the kind of space con? I mean, we're enjoying it here, but you're saying it wasn't like a convention today. Kind of do you think anything could bring back a space con type of con when it is purely fan run? Oh boy. Wow. We, we, well, uh, the type of convention that it, it was, my answer is yes. We have our convention. Uh, creatures. <laughs> well. <laughs> Now, August, and, and our uh, convention, which is now in its seventh year, is moving to a hotel for the first year uh, in San Ramon, the Marriott. And we're paying tribute to the Planet of the Apes 50 years and the Night of the Living Dead 50 years. And we're having a costume contest, and we've got stars. And uh, now we should say we're we're very very light. I would say it's not existent. We don't have any science at the thing. <laughs> basically, no, the convention is all about classic and camp horror and science fiction, horror hosts, and monster kid culture. So it's more about the the vintage uh, vi vintage horror and science fiction films of 50s, 60s, 70s, into the 80s a bit. Well, and, it's tight knit because the stars that we have there yes. and the uh, dealers and we're all together, so right. it, that's what I meant by skate, uh, being like yeah. space time yes. because we're all there and it's not a big, huge, uh, you know, uh, cold convention, right? You know, not that this is, I'm enjoying Well, myself. I'm freezing myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, right now. Yeah. Right. Are, are, are they going to confiscate your lighter at the, at the door of your, your convention? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to mention we don't have tickets or anything like that. Um, so, uh, I, I have to, I have to say, sorry, to, uh, when they first show the dealers room, they show that guy smoking a cigarette. Yeah. And when I walked in here at three p.m., I saw fifteen lighters before they confiscated the conveyor belt. Anyway, uh, what, what inspired you to do all this besides the fact that it gave you everything? And how long did it take for you to put it together? Um, well, the, back to SpaceCon, um, I'm trying to think here now, I think Back to SpaceCon was my third documentary. I, my first documentary was Watch War Films Keep America Strong, which was the story of Creature Features, which was about Bob and John. And then I, I spent a year on that and I decided, you know, that was fun, but I don't know if I really want to make films, and I kind of just left it there. But it became so popular, and, and this thing came over me, which comes over a lot of filmmakers, is, well, could I do it again? And I had to go on to the second one, which was uh, remembering Playland at the Beach, and oh my God, did that thing take off. I mean, that, that's still the biggest film I've ever, ever made. Uh, it played at the Balboa Theater in San Francisco for four and a half months. Yeah. So then I went back to science fiction again and did back to space time because I had some footage, but I didn't think about doing it like this, you know, uh, 16 by 9 and scanning the 16 millimeter footage. It was just basic transfers and stuff like that. So the quality wasn't there. So I really wanted to, to show the quality of this film. And then I had these interviews that were done at the same time, and I, I felt that intermixing them with the footage was the right way to go, because it was the same time period. And uh, so that's the reason I did that. And uh, and then I went back to, you know, uh, another San Francisco historical film, and then back to fantasy, and I was all over the place, and I ended up in the last two on Ghosts. But I don't know, so. And when did we find out about we, we've got postcards at the table. Yeah. 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 But it's so August 12th. August 12th? Yeah. In yeah. Sam, yeah. In Sam yeah. And it's uh, preacherscon.com. Yes. Preacherscon.com. Yes. Preacherscon. Yes. All the information's on there. Um, 
And I can't wait because as a huge Planet of the Apes fan, we're celebrating uh, the 50th anniversary of Planet of the Apes, and I get to interview Caesar from the latest incarnation of Planet of the Apes. Oh, he's going to be there. Uh, uh, Caesar there. want to talk about the yeah. yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah. Charlotte, Charlotte Stewart. Charlotte Stewart's going to be there. From yeah. Twin Peaks and uh, Tremors. Tremors. Uh, she was a school mom in... Uh, well, uh, Shop Prairie. Prairie. Well, yeah. I almost said Little Shuffle Forest. No. <laughs> 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 little Shuffle Forest. Same thing. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. This yeah. gentleman, of course, is going to be there. Thanks, Stanley. You? Yeah. It's going to be a nice, tight knit convention. If you really yeah. want to enjoy one that you don't have to go, you know, and wear out your legs, this will, this will do it. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, any other questions? What a great crowd. Questions. <laughs> you have a question. Oh, yes. Is that really Vincent Mandel as in the dark hair oh. costume? Uh, I don't know. It says, you know. Well, I don't know. What was your question <laughs> again? It was about <clears throat> people. There were people that were there appearing on the screen, like there's uh, right after that, it said the Wilkins family, and there was Robbie and Nancy. Okay. okay. I, I, that, I asked Vincent Mandel that, and he said, no, Tom. I was living in England at the time, so I didn't go to the space Because I identified somebody as so. If any of you out there know the comedian Matt Weinhold, he was a little Klingon boy in the, uh, in the uh, costume company. I recognized him. Yeah, Tom, you said that the guy that uh, took his mask off went over to drink water, but they took his mask off. Who was that? That's <laughs> uh, Mark Williams. He actually um, moved down to Hollywood and did uh, special effects for. Movies like uh, Betty Davis' last film, The Wicked Stepmother, for Larry Cohen. Um, he's passed. He passed away, but uh, yeah, he did do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I was amazed looking at it that um, probably most of the dealers that you saw in this film are no longer with us, and oh. most of the young people uh, in this film are all, you know, fifties and sixties. You know, that's what. That's what's kind of neat about uh, looking back is, uh, you know, you can see uh, what it was like. Yeah, well, as this gentleman said, it's real time caps. Real time caps. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole period. Well, that was, that was my intention. Uh, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, it was totally my intention to let people see what it was like with what I had. But I have to repeat again, I don't really believe that there's that much footage of any other convention in the uh, mid to late 70s that exists around the country, you know? I've seen some footage of some new, uh, East Coast conventions, but it was all shot in 8mm, wow. you know? And they added sound to it and stuff like that, so, I, you know, the only ones that really would have done it if, is the, the, if the news went out, you know? Because that's who was using 16mm mag sound. Was, was the news, you know, they, that's how they got it, and they brought it back to the studio, and they had to develop it and, and get it on for the nightly news, which is unbelievable that they were using film, but they were, and people don't realize that, you know, it, we're such in a video age where you can, you know, shoot a movie with your iPhone, right? and, uh, you know, they don't realize that uh, all through the, you know, 50s and uh, 60s and early 70s, or all through the 70s, you were shooting film. I, I just wanted to um, talk about the specialness of that footage too. Um, I, I live in LA, and I, I was I was born and raised here, but I'm sorry about that, Tom. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I I moved down there 20 years ago. Actually, it's uh, Rod Roddenberry, Gene Roddenberry's son. Had been talking about doing a, a documentary about his dad, um, who passed away when he was only 17. And I would go to these conventions year after year after year, and it, he would have these panels talking about, you know, what he's planning for his uh, documentary for Gene Roddenberry. And uh, he'd have these heavyweight editors that had done work on Roger Corman films and everything. And it really seems that uh, what gave it the green light to finally do it after talking about it for 10 or 15 years, and I understand, he even told the crowd, it's got to be great, or I'm not going to do it, right? So he have been, been talking about it, promoting it, saying I'm going to do it for 10, 15 years, 
finally couldn't find the 70s you know, convention footage of Star Trek <laughs> until he found out what he would have been Yeah, and until he got a hold of some guy on the phone whose initials are TW yeah. <laughs> uh, and with an interviewer named Bob something, Wilkins I guess. <laughs> and uh, so you see that footage on there and it really seems like it, it, it was like that was a catalyst for really getting a green light to actually happen. Yeah. This actually uh, happened to me three times. Uh, what was the Roddenberry one called? I forgot. I don't even remember. I forgot. I looked it up today. Yeah. They, they, they got the footage that you saw of Gene uh, in the film here and they used it in, in uh, that one. But also uh, for the love of Spock, uh, they, they, they got three big segments of, of what you saw uh, of, of Leonard Nimoy uh, for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the funny one was I got a call for the movie Jobs, and it was like, why do you guys want footage of, of picture features for Jobs? Well, uh, my understanding was is that when they invented the first Apple computer in Steve Jobs' dad's garage, uh, everybody that was in there working on it, they had a little small TV and they used to watch Creature Features with Bob Wilkins. <laughs> and they were going to film a scene that they actually did in the original garage and they put an old TV in there and they wanted to put Bob Wilkins on the TV while they were filming the scene. So, <laughs> so I got a credit for the love of Spock and Jobs and uh, why can't I can't really remember the Gene Run very well. It's like, oh well. Trek Nation! Thank you, was that it? Trek Nation. Nation, there you go, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how rare this footage is that you saw. I mean, very, very rare. So. Did we see all of the Gene Runbury footage, or did no. you just use some? No, I and mean, you didn't see all of uh, Harrison Ford. Yes, uh, and he was kind of—he was kind of like not a very good interviewer, as you kind yeah. of you know, and I heard that about him. And uh, and it, it, I think also too the fact that uh, um, Carrie Fisher and Mark Hamill were, you know, so young. And, and you can see how happy they were about being in the film and stuff. You know, they, they hadn't got tainted yet. So that's also nice to see, you know. And, and, uh, and Harrison, I mean, uh, Mark Hamill was uh, a convention goer and, uh, you know, was into all of the horror films. So, you know, that was perfect for him. I'd like to suggest a uh, uh, title for the sequel. But not the plan of Star Wars. <laughs> 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 yeah. Sure. Yeah. Any other questions? Any questions? You, did a great job. you guys are ready for the for the winning. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, so we're gonna knock a couple of people out of this one now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, any thoughts about what your next project will be? Uh, you know something, I, I did just, I'll just do it real quick, but uh, you know, I, I spent almost a year trying to figure out a film after the eighth one, or maybe it was the seventh one, I don't remember, and I came up with one called Haunted Sonoma County, and it was a historical journey around Sonoma County to haunted locations, and it played up there and was a huge hit. I, th I think uh, attendance almost hit 10,000, which is pretty damn good for an uh, independent film. So right away, people were saying, you got to make another, you got to make another. And I'm like, no way, no way. <laughs> and I don't know, it hit me probably a month or so after the final run of the film that, yeah, maybe I should. And so I decided to expand out to Napa and Mendocino counties and make haunted wine country that included three counties. And, um, and that one opened in the first part of October of last year, uh, Sebastiani and two complete premiere, two completely sold out shows, 440 people, people loved it. And what was really neat about that one was that the Summerfield in Santa Rosa was going to do the major premiere and they had been running the trailer and had the poster up a month in advance and uh, pre-sold tickets and everything was ready to go after the Sebastiani and it was going to open on October 13th, Friday, October 13th, perfect night for it and uh, that Monday before the 13th, the fires hit. 
Wow. And that just killed it. I mean, uh, and it, it could not recover uh, after the fires because wine country uh, was destroyed, basically, in a lot of ways. And who wants to go see a film called Haunted Wine Country? You know? mm -hmm. Anyway, so I'll bring it back in October of next year. So, um, and I don't know, you know, after that experience, uh, I, I really can't say uh, what I'm going to do. So I, I've actually been doing some uh, commercials and short films for people, which. Uh, you made a really good. Uh, Promotion film for the theater you mentioned. Yeah, the Sebastiani Theater in Sonoma, the which is on the yeah. plaza in Sonoma. A really neat old theater built in 1920 is trying to restore, and, and they wanted me to do a, a, a fundraising film for them. That was I enjoyed doing that because you know you can film it in a day and you can edit it in a, in, in a week and you're done. You know, it's not like filming uh, all of my documentaries, which are just about a year. And, uh, and then before they get to the screen. You know, it always amazes me when I see a hour-long TV show that's really only 40 minutes with commercials and they look at the credits and they've got like, you know, 190 people in there. It's like, I wish I could have 100. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the question question. Just, How do you get your funding for all of your independent films? Uh, independently, myself. <laughs> Well, this was existing footage, but I, you know, I'll be honest with you, uh, having all that footage scanned was about $1,200. Yeah, you know, so I absorbed that, and I'm not going to recover it if I don't sell DVDs, but you know, I, I'd rather have happy faces uh, because it's you know so rare. And, and like I say, you can get the Back to Space Con, and I do have the, the Star Wars DVDs that you can get, which has all the Star Wars uh, interviews. So. Up there after this? No, they're closed right now. Yeah. We'll, we'll be there tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. You're coming tomorrow? Right there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One uh, booth's 141. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's see. Don, you're not in on this one. <laughs> right. Yeah. Scott Moon is not in on this one. So right. I think everybody I else is. Two guys in the back. Oh, I'm back in? You're out of it. Yeah, the two guys in the back may know. Yeah. And Tom's sitting right there that's sleeping. We don't have to talk now. You're out of this one. I know you guys know the answer. Okay, so the rest of you are on this one. Okay, so this is what you need to do to win this poster. Who wants to win the poster, by the way? No, not everybody. Walls are right, If you don't want to win the poster, don't answer. Okay. You can answer this question. Raise your hand. Okay. You'll be good. Yeah. Okay. So you can take this poster right now out the door if you can give me the answer to this question. I need the name of the very first Star Trek convention in Northern California. It was held in San Francisco. And what episode of Star Trek was the name based on? <coughs> oh my god. Really? Does anyone know? I know you. I know you. <laughs> So is Jeff. Okay. Nobody Google it. <laughs> okay, second question. Oh. What? Can I give my hint? Can I give my hint? No. Wait, 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 wait. Somebody knows the answer. Where? Where? Does what? Oh, I said where no man is. Who's going to No. No. I could give him a very vague, okay, so, vague hint. Okay, vague um, What's that movie with um, Ethan Hawke and they have a series, The Purge? The Purge? This is a clue. This is a clue. That's it, about as vague as you can get. The Purge, the Purge is very similar in concept to an episode that he's talking about of Star Trek. Boy. I, I told you it was a vague one. I know. Okay, I'll, I'll give a... No, I'll, I'll give another clue. Yes, you have a guess? A guess? Turn of the Archons? Ah, oh, that's, that's part of the answer. That's part of the answer. Is Return of Star Trek? <laughs> you got the right episode, but what's you got the, the right name of the convention? Okay, go for it. Is it Archon? No. 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 Think about, think about that episode, Return of the Archons. All our yesterday? Is it Star Trek? No. Uh, the, the, right yeah, the right hour. The right hour. 
called the Red Hour Festival. That's right. 1975 at Lincoln High School in San Francisco. And uh, George Takai, um, George Takai, Walter Cohen, and uh, Arlene Martell, Arlene Martell, Arlene Martell and uh, uh, Walter Keeney, James Doohan. They were all there and they all signed for free. Yeah. All you had to go is you went to a dealer, you bought a photograph, and you got in line. That's the way it worked. That's the way it worked. All right, so you won the post. Congratulations. Thank you for coming, and uh, we hope to see you tomorrow. You don't have to buy anything, but we can talk. Yeah, come on. All right, bye-bye.